Eight days later, the finger was amputated. Um, systemic, there were some uh, systemic effects, but uh, I don't think the snake got too much venom into me because I came off lightly. I didn't have to have anti venom for this bite. So, today I'm going to speak about the forest cobras that we have in Africa. Forest cobras is a uh, cobra complex, it was uh, broken into five different cobras. This venom is also a powerful neurotoxic component in there and for that you need to be uh, very careful. Neurotoxins will stop your breathing and that can be fatal. So if you get a bite from this snake, your main concern will be the neurotoxic component. How can you slow the effects of that neurotoxic component? Good day, my name is Mike Perry from the company African Reptiles and Venom. This company was started in 1999 to produce snake venom for South African vaccine producers, the government company that makes our anti-venom. So today I'm going to speak about the forest cobras that we have in Africa. Forest cobras is a uh, cobra complex. It was uh, broken into five different cobras uh, by the scientists. Uh, we get one in the Sao Tome Islands off the uh, African coast. And then we get four species on the African continent. The one we get in South Africa is the brown forest cobra. It's a snake that's uh, light brown or bronze, the first third of the body. The midsection goes dark and it's got a pitch black tail. Then we get the Central African forest cobra. It's a uh, black forest cobra with some light banding on the uh, front surface, on the neck. Then in uh, West Africa, we get two forest cobras. The one is called the Guinea forest cobra. It's a black forest cobra with normally a single white band on the throat. And then further away from the coast, we get the Savannah forest cobra, which is a black forest cobra with about a half a dozen or so yellow bands on the front part of the body. Uh, the forest cobras are uh, large snakes. They can reach over 2.7 meters in length. They are normally uh, massive snakes. They can have a large venom delivery. And uh, the forest cobras from um, Central and West Africa have a very potent venom. Uh, the one that we have in South Africa, the brown forest cobra, the venom contains quite a bit of cytotoxic effects. Um, as I can attest to, as I've lost the finger from a bite from a brown forest cobra. The snake you see is the uh, Savannah African forest cobra. Right, we used to just think it was a color phase, but it's now got a new scientific name. Niger Sana Savanula. So these snakes occur away from the West African coastal areas. Um, and it's a black snake with some yellow banding on the front half of the body. Beautiful snakes, very potent venom. This venom is a neurotoxin with some cytotoxic, cytotoxic components in it. So we're going to extract venom from the snake. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the snake to bite through the plastic. And we'll collect the venom in the beaker there. So when they looked at the differences, they look at uh, scaling. So they'll do um, body scale counts. And they look at the colors. And this snake constantly has this color phrase. So it's a black forest cobra with about uh, half a dozen or so 
yellow bands on the front half of the body. It's a non-spinning cobra, so I can just look at it like this. If this was a spinning cobra, it'll spray venom in my face. Um, all the Pharos cobras have this uh, dark suturing, dark markings on the border of the scales on the upper lip. One feature of a forest cobra, they like to grip you. They like to reverse and pull the head out of your grip. And they do that by constantly letting the tail go wherever. Uh, so in 1999, we started this company to do the venom production. We situated between uh, Joburg and Pretoria. We started off small, but we've now grown to uh, have uh, more than 800 snakes that we use for venom supply. Um, venom supply is a uh, charity work. It's not really uh, financially re uh, rewarding. So if you think you're going to make money out of venom supply, you're not. Um, the anti-venom unit uh, was established in, uh, 18, uh, in 1928. And um, they started antivenom production in 1932. <laughs> The snake you see me holding here is the uh, brown or eastern forest cobra. Uh, these snakes occur on the East African coastal areas. They go into uh, tropical forests and um, normally a brown forest cobra that's got a third of the body brown, then it goes darker towards the middle and then the pitch black tail. Right. Once again, large snakes. These snakes can reach two and a half meters in length. Uh, very powerful snakes. They have this habit of always coiling the tail, trying to get out of your grip. Um, I'm gonna get the snake to bite this beaker and get rid of the venom. So let's see what he's gonna do now. Uh, very willing to bite. Uh, rich yellow color venom. So this one consistently it has this body color where you see first third of the body brown, mid body goes darker and then the last third is a pitch black as you can see there. If we contrast this part with the middle and then with the back, see that black tail as opposed to the brown. So as I spoke to you about the uh, antivenom unit, they started antivenom production in uh, 1932. And by 1970, they decided to make a new antivenom, the new polyvalent. So ever since then, their facility has remained exactly the same as it was. Um, there has been no expansion in that facility. So after more than 50 years, the facility is now too small. Uh, that's the first problem we have. The second problem is uh, with COVID, there were some uh, delays with some suppliers, not with snake venom, because they work on five-year buffer stock of uh, venom. So there were some supply problems from uh, other suppliers. But then in uh, 2023, South Africa experienced a lot of load shedding. Load shedding means that there's not enough electrical power to provide the whole grid with power. Antivenom is a biological product. 
It's horse serum that contains the antibodies against the snake venoms. So this biological product needs to be kept cool. The ideal temperature is between 4 and 8 degrees Celsius. So with load shedding, the product went over temperature, and then it had to be uh, destroyed. And then we had an antivenom shortage. Next, in August of uh, 2024, the World Health Organization did an audit at SAVP. And unfortunately, the audit results motivated SAVP to immediately upgrade the facility. So they stopped antivirin production in September of 2024. And now we are in May of 2025, and they still haven't started antivirin production as yet. So that's where we are standing right now. So we don't have any antivenom production in South Africa at the moment. Uh, we do, however, have antivenom. Antivenom that are being supplied to other countries in Africa from Indian, um, Mexican and uh, Costa Rica manufacturers are available in South Africa. They are imported under a Section 21 import. So the antivenom, there is antivenom available, but it's not our South African manufactured antivenom. Snake we see is the Central African Forest Cobra. All right, these snakes are pitch black, have a number of bands on the front surface of the body. Um, also known as black and white lip cobras because of those very distinct black and white markings on the lips. Once again, a massive snake. These snakes can reach 2.7 meters in length. Uh, very uh, common snakes in African forests. Uh, they are uh, well known for being a large cobra that is difficult to handle. Um, they have a very positive feeding response. So if you keep these snakes and you open the cage, the snake comes out and whatever it sees moving, it will think it's food. Um, so they have chase many a snake catcher around their snake room as they try and avoid these snakes latching onto them. So let's see what venom we can get from this snake. We'll get the snake to Nice yellow venom. Mm -hmm. There it goes again. Cobras have this habit that when they're angry that they will bite and chew and uh, often uh, latch on and keep that uh, grip for quite a bit of uh, seconds can be quite a daunting um, occasion um, my finger was lost from a forest cobra but not this particular species but the uh, brown forest cobra and it was the same thing when the snake latched onto my finger it held onto my finger I had to pull my finger out of its mouth there's uh, there are some uh, scale differences if you want to go very technical, you can look at all the different um, scale counts, how many ventrals, how many subcortical counts, and uh, that's what they will use to put them in a different species. This is uh, Niger melanoleuca, the Central African forest cobra. These snakes occur in forests from uh, Central Africa and into West Africa. There we see the venom of the brown forest cobra. This is the one over here, illustrated on the poster, which is one of the 10 venoms we use for South African polyvalent snake antivenom. 
So this venom contains both neurotoxic components and some cytotoxic components. At the bite side, you can have tissue damage, as you can see from this here. This was a bite 15 years ago. A uh, forest cobra bit me through a bag on the finger. The snake held on. I had to pull my finger out of its mouth forcefully. And uh, eight days later, the finger was amputated. Um, systemic, there were some uh, systemic effects, but uh, I don't think the snake got too much venom into me because I came off lightly. I didn't have to have anti-venom for this bite. But this venom is also a powerful neurotoxic component in there. And for that, you need to be uh, very careful. Neurotoxins will stop your breathing and that can be fatal. So if you get a bite from this snake, your main concern will be the neurotoxic component. How can you slow the effects of that neurotoxic component? So there's uh, two methods you can use. You can use uh, pressure bandaging which is the most common method that is explained to uh, first aiders. We use special bandages that have printed rectangles every 10 centimeters. And you stretch that bandage to make the rectangle a square. And when you place the bandage, it gives you the correct pressure on the limb. Now for pressure bandaging, you need help. You can't do it yourself and then transport yourself to a clinic or hospital. You need somebody to do all that for you because pressure immobilization has two components. Firstly, the correct pressure, and secondly, complete immobility. So pressure immobilization is a group activity, and you're not part of the group as such. You're the mannequin that the group is going to work with. Uh, the other method of uh, stopping neurotoxins or slowing them is uh, BP cuff, which is what we've used here successfully with a mamba and a Cape Cobra bite. It gives us a two-hour window to get to the hospital, at the hospital, the antivenom is first infused, and once the antivenom has gone in, the BP cuff is then slowly released. Uh, the body is already full of antivenom, the circulation, so as the venom gets released from the bite site, uh, the antivenom is already there to neutralize it. In both cases of those two bites, the black mamba and the Cape Cobra bite, the uh, patient was discharged the next day. So, there is the venom from a brown forest cobra. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you are interested in any of the training courses we do, please check out our new website. And uh, we hope to see you here very soon for a very informative snake course.